Good day guys, coming here. Welcome back to Languages and News from the Future. So, alright, the usual stuff. We'll be going through first part, the CV of the characters, and this time it's gonna be much faster. Part 2 going on the skills, talent tree seed, and followed by the last part where we will feature the pros con and how the gimmick of the hero works through sharing and also it's item built and wash duty and for the translations i've done for you guys and also sharing of the item builds so are you guys ready let's get started so very great thanks to information shared and provided by the language of mobile and mohammedan so you and what you're seeing right now is on part two featuring the march to april hero known as yumir his former self is known as Phanasis. And this is his art. And of course, um, some of you who are kind of like uh, into girls, characters are he female heroine, and you might think this character is definitely ugly. You might not like it. But things can be shocking for you guys, especially after you have seen his echo of light skin. So alright, um, the speech things we will go through then, and alright, he's voiced by none other than Akira Ishida, and not going to go through too much because he is currently voicing our existing heroes already, and you guys, if your eyes, if your eyes or ears sharp enough, you guys might have noticed already, he had, or he has been voicing Elwin and SP. Elwin in the language of two characters in the mobile series. Then these are the other anime series or game series that he has voiced from New Genesis Evangelion. Then to the right it's Atronza Gundam Justice. Ikimas. <laughs> yep, from Gundam Seed. Then bottom left, Gara from, well, you guess it right, Naruto. So if you guys are a huge fan, you definitely got to pull for him. And last but not least, from Gintama, known as Zura. Then some relationship he shared with characters is Iris, his younger sister. So quick background story is, back at a time when Yumiya is still known as Fantasies, he is known, uh, known as the door keeper, or the whole, holy door protector. He lived for a long time with his sister, Elis Iris, for a very long time. Until that day, that faithful day, the invasion of chaos through all the gates and all the doors. And with this, um, watching from another side of the door, Iris can do nothing but staring and watching that her brother, her one and only brother, selflessly alone fight against the invasion of Chaos Force. Then next, and surprisingly, he had a relationship with Leo Beck, but of course, definitely not that surprising. If you guys um, remember, at least um, introduced, depending on which server you're on, but definitely for the CN server one year ago, during the release of Leo Beck and Xion, uh, and also during the introduction of the art of the of Tatalia and Nim, the Eternal Gardens arc. Then, um, so first thing is on Leo Beck or Xion on the second last or last gate of fate. Uh, there is a Rick ogre enemy. Um, there is not. Uh, there is a zombie fight ogre enemy that um, has only one phrase or sentence that is saying Leo Beck true friend or 
in global maybe just friend and that is actually Yumiya and so the relationship with him is being the gay guardian so after battling with the chaos force Phenesis has used up all his energy and his the memory that he wants whole become blurred and because of the explosion impact that has reached out to gay pies the land of gay pies Phenesis has once again raised on a journey to search for his sister however everything changed with the meeting of Leo Beck or with the appearance of Leo Beck and after finding out the cruel experiment helped by this group of people known as the Eternal Gardens Phenesis and Leo Beck has gone through a secret deal and thus this once holy and handsome Phenesis has been invaded or corroded by the power of chaos and has turned into a disgustingly brutal monster known as Yumir. So alright, this is his chibi art and if you ask me, I won't feel that he is actually ugly. I'll say that um, this design looks cool and nonetheless, I, I kind of, the, the first thing that I find a bit of fam familiarity is, if I'm not wrong, I mean maybe they took a little part here and there. The design reminds me of the villain from... Um, my Hero Academia or, or for one or one for one I mean I, I can't really remember but, but kind of like the way the villains has very nice or um, demonic looking eyes while they cover part of their face alright not going too much because um, well the VA is from Akira Ishida and let's listen how he sounds like before we go to the second part of the video. Here we go. So right, um, if you listen the first time, it's not... Uh, you just find a bit of familiarity, but once you play it a few more times, uh, you definitely tell that this is voiced by Akira Ishida. He just set his voice line lower and deeper for Yumiya because they want to make him be fit of a monster. But still, nonetheless, it still kind of sounds um too cool. Okay, one last time. Here we go. Karedawa. Alright, and that's it. Now we'll be going through second part. Here we go. So right, we have come to part two featuring the skills factions Talon and 3C and before we carry on, so as you guys, if you find this picture very familiar, yes, this is the guy who actually saved Tatalia and Nim from the cruel experiment held by the Eternal Gardens characters and the previous um, in-game story art um, is using this character art design and where his true form is supposed to be a red ogre which is very weird because his sister is a unicorn again I gotta say that and yep and um, compared to Silica um, it's a 
striker, physical attacker. Um, he's not a supporter. And currently, he and Silica are both tier one. Or, or at least for Silica, she's at least um tier one to zero. And Yume is definitely tier one in the Apex currently. Um, he's good to go with just um rank rank four or five. And all right, his talent and skills are much more straightforward. So, all right, his first off his faction buff. So he belongs to one glory of light, second darkness, and third yellows. So the current downside is that um, glory of light and yellows. Oh, uh, sorry, Glory of Light and Darkness. Um, Glory of Light only held by Elwin, his counterpart of another character voiced by the same person. Um, so, I'm, based on the release of Yumiya, I speculate that um, Elwin casting might be ca coming soon. Then, for Darkness, um, we can only wait. Hopefully, this coming 6th year anniversary will have the single banner with a darkness faction and for yellows um you can get that from landis hopefully there will be a 3c yellows faction buffer coming soon all right for his talent so okay here we go the talent is known as shackle of extreme will or jazz of extreme will or you can call it chain of extreme will because if you look at his character design he has some shackles or chains holding on to him okay but don't worry you can watch to the end for the translation i've done for you guys so things are as follow as you can see here number one when you enter battle increase damage to you by 30 percent well that's definitely a lot number two when you initially possess this buff, Shackle of Glory, or Brilliance Holy Flail, you will gain the following effect. Damage you receive will be reduced by 30%. Second effect, you will immune to all debuff effect. And third, when immunity effect trigger, you will gain another buff known as Search of Fury. So Surge of Fury will provide the following effect. Increase your crit rate by 15%. This effect can be stacked and cannot be dispelled. And that's it. So it's kind of like buff, uh, one buff triggering to another buff. And not to mention that um, it's pretty cool. That's why um, once you are level rank 4, you can throw him to battle because of the following things he has increased damage due 30 percent then um, once he possesses the shackle of glory he will have damage reduction then immune to debuff and not to mention he will gain this buff effect known as search of fairy which can be stacked cannot be dispelled and there is no stack limit so you can easily hit the 100% trigger rate. Number three, when you end your turn, if you're in the danger zone and has four layers of search of fury, you gain the following effect. The first being remove shackle of glory buff. Second, buff turn you had will not be reduced and you can act again. Third, this effect cannot be dispelled. Number four, when you do not have Shackle of Glory and goes into battle, the following effect will happen. Sorry, the following will happen. So the first being, if target enemy defense is greater than magic defense, the damage deal will be treated as magic damage instead. Second, when you end your turn, remove 
all layers of search of theory, which we'll be calling it SOF for short, and gain shackles of glory, SOG for short. So it's pretty cool. He's the characters with um, inbuilt mechanism that can make him immune to debuff, increase crit rate, then by default he already has damage increment, so all you need to do is just give him attack buff. He also has damage reduction, immunity, and all these are from talent. This is unlike older characters like Leon that needs um, skills like Shiveries or Crystal Protections from Rose and Seals. So he's kind of like um, someone who can stand on his own. However, the downside, the pros and cons, I guess, will be the fourth point regarding his when he do not has SOG and go into battle, the effect that if enemy's defense is greater than magic defense, the damage will be treated as magic damage instead. So it will be pretty cool if you are fighting against characters like Landis or maybe Latin because most of the time their defense, their physical defense are greater. Um, however, if you fight against enemy like Elma 2.0 or Christiane usually by default um, oh, they, they are great magic tankers so if by any chance maybe through some buff if they happen to have like defense that is like around 1003 and the magic defense is 1002 then in this case, um, because the defense is greater, the damage deal will become magic damage instead. And this is a bad case where the damage deal will, be, will still be considerably lower. However, the best scenario is like against characters like Landis, where it's common to see that his defense is like around 1008. But his magic defense is probably less than 1002. This is just an example. And then if you try to convert to magic damage, obviously um, the benefit is greater. So pros and cons for this part. And it's kind of long for his talent, but well, um, when you go into the real actual demo play, it's easier to understand better so no worries okay moving on to his exclusive skill one is known as oops there's a one that's a name this roughly translated as or loosely translated as holy doll blessing or holy gate blessing so as you can see it's a 1c skill the cd has a 4 turn the range itself the aoe type is single target it has both command aura effect and active skills effect. So first off for command aura, number one, allies three blocks around you when they end turn, you will dispel one debuff effect from them. Or they will have one debuff effect from them removed. Number two, Successful dispelling of each debuff will allow the hero with this skills to gain one layer of SOF, aka Search of Fury. So, this is pretty cool. So, whether you or your allies have debuff, and once they end their turn, if they're three blocks within range, uh, you manage to debuff, dispel one each. So, if you can dispel like around four you get 60 percent and then to top it up with your own skills and chance of crit rate that you can easily or have higher chance to hit 100 percent crit rate so this skill is pretty cool and efficient not to mention it's a common aura and um, yeah it can work very well um, as long as your allies are three blocks around you Active skills, number one, recover 30% of max HP. Number two, randomly gain four buff and four debuff. 
yourself. Number three, for each layer of SOF you have, you will receive the following effect. Number one, say first, this skill CD will be reduced by one. Second, no buff, number of buff and debuff will be reduced by one each. It's not the turn count, but the number of buff and debuff. So if you have four buff and four debuff um, for each layer, so if you have four layer, the buff or debuff will be reduced by one. But um, currently, it's not explained here that is it both or it will be randomly for um, four taken from either the buff or debuff. We'll find out, um, see if there is any more in-depth uh, description towards the end. So it's pretty cool. Um, first off, you get to recover 30% of your HP. Then you purposely gain this for buff and debuff. Then not to mention it, um, his talent, when you criteria is made, you will trigger immune to debuff. So you will not gain the for debuff. So it's pretty nice. And not to mention because... Um, for each layer of SOF you have, this skill CD will be reduced by one, and this skill CD um, turn CD is four turns. So if you have four layer of SOF, you have an instant reset on the skills, meaning you can keep spamming the skills every turn if you need to. Okay, coming to exclusive skill two. This is just straightforward. Um, everything is active, known as either Blood Burning Trial or Blood Burning Judgment. It's a 2C skills, has a CD of 2 turns, the range is 1. The AoE type is Physical Single Target Skill. The effects are as follows. Number 1. Attack and deal 1.5 times damage to target enemy. Number 2. If enemy has debuff effect increase your unit's attack by 20 percent for this battle number three before battle for each layer of sof you had cause enemy to gain the same number of de debuff it is max debuff they can get is cap at four note this attack has slow attack animation and may be easily countered by high speed attacker like cavalry units. So um, this extra note um, is added here because I uh, one sharing from a pro about how they did a live test of Yumia blood burning trail to fight against Andre. And it turns out um, you die first before you get to even cast these skills on uh, against characters like Andre. So you got to be careful when you choose to cast this skill. It depends on the enemies you need. Okay, last. 3C is known as the... There's only one part, there's not a transforming skill, so it's going to be short, sweet, and easy. The name is known as Punishment for Evil or Evil Punishment Retribution. So this skill has a CD of 4, the range is 1 block. The AoE type, again, is Physical Single Target. It, however, has both passive and active skills, so we'll be going through on the passive first. Number 1. When you do not have SOG buff, aka search of sorry SOG buff, you gain plus two movement speed. Number two, when you end turn for each layer of SOF, recover ten percent HP of unit. So whoa, so another hero, and this not mentioned. This hero has self-imbued um, movement mechanism 
Definitely this is taken from Zeridas 2.0, the similarity. So again, SOG check of glory and SOF is search of fury. So I know I mentioned for each layer of search of fury you had, you recover 10% HP. That is ensuring that um, you had a higher survivability. And not to mention, if you had a combo with Silica, that is going to be very strong. Um, you just make sure you can revive. Okay, last part for active skills. The fact I follow. Number one, attack and deal 1.7 times damage on target enemy. Number two, if target enemy have debuff effect, they cannot trigger revive effect. Or surviving death blow effect number three for each layer of sof you had you will convert the equivalent amount of the target buff into debuff effect number four if enemies survive the attack the following things will happen first you'll gain four layers of sof such of fury on start of next turn. Second, if you have SOG buff, you gain the four layers straight away instead of waiting for next turn. Third, if the enemy die, you can move another three blocks. Do note that causing enemy to not be able to revive only happen in PvP mode. So the second effect of if Target enemy have debuff effect. They cannot trigger revival effect. It's um, kind of useless in PvE. It is just not there. They did not replace it as another effect like reduce their defense by X percentage like compared to other heroes. So um, this probably is going to be the downside for his skill. So just a um, quick recap for this effect before we come to the next part about sharing our in-depth information by sharing in courtesy um, of sharing from pros is that check of glory will the effect is to let you receive damage reduction of 30 percent and immune to all debuff then when immunity effect triggers you will gain the buff such of fury which Search of Fury is the one that gives you crit, crit rate increment which can which have no stacks limit based on the text written here. So SOG gives you damage reduction and Im, uh, debuff immunity while SOF gives you crit rate increment. So right now we'll be going to the last part and here we go this part in courtesy of the Languiza data bank Monghua Moinzhan Ziliao Ku and also uh, Mongyuan the Mongzhan Kepu Mongyuan's um, Languiza database so uh, apparently this one of this pro players find out um, there is something weak about his exclusive skill to Blooding Blood Trail is um that they're talking about the attack speed is that of a holy class unit and that means their attack speed is very very slow so for any one of you guys who can understand how things work um feel free to comment it on the comment sections because i i don't quite get it i mean all i understand is that the attack animations and the way they do is very slow so apparently there is um time frame i'm not i'm not sure if it's just a gauge unit by ms or movement speed or just um by the animation frame fps so the highlighted part is talking about three parts the first part is talking about um the chanting time is 500 then followed by the hero movement timing is 400 then the third is 
releasing time one of the SKU is 850 and supposedly the higher the numbers the faster you are oh sorry the, the, um, the higher the higher the number is the slower you are so based on this um, programmers analysis the exclusive SKU 2 blood burning trial the attack speed is 2050 after they add, add out everything so this is the same as the excuse the holy lightning from nani nani sherry the same speed from the sp sherry okay fairly same speed which they say is kind of slow Because um, the additional 300 ad is because they say normal attack and skills different is that skills will take an additional 300. And this is a speed for fast attacking unit like cavalry. So the hero movement time is 600. The highlighted part okay I'm not sure which okay now I'm slightly confused I'm not sure with the higher num higher number is it slower or faster but it seems to be that the higher the number the slower you are And this is the movement speed. So Calvary Leon Assault is 1100. So I, then now they're taking um, Andre normal attack speed from the process A to D from start to the end um, the speed is 1007 so that's why um, I'm saying the longer the time uh, the slower you are so as you can see they need to do all this ex exec from ex execution to the end um, is 2050 whereas on drill normal attack from start to end animation is only 1007 speed so the following is the picture of how on drills can kill and take on a Yumiya who is using his 2C skill. So the flowing how shows that. And both parties are at full health. Sorry. Uh, it seems Andro it's it's at 85 HP threshold. And yet he's um attacking faster than a Yumiya who is using his 2C skills. Before Yumiya, it's uh, Yumiya is still even chanting his skills and has not yet released. Andreos and his whole troops units has already come to his face and killed him off. This is like what we have always been talking about um, at Tech Speed period um, during the year one and year two that from the collaboration uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. Yusuke has the highest attack speed it's the highest attack speed melee hero so if any units try to come into melee attack with him they will get one punch out by Yus uh, transform Yusuke first and yep that's it for this um, sharing of the 2c now we'll be talking about the gimmick pros and cons about his talent and skills hard and what you're looking at right now yep you're you're saying it right this is Yumiya his echo of light skin and they gave him what he deserved his original handsome looks So mentioned about his 
tell anything to about his check of glory s o g so just to confirm some of the questions that we might asking if there is a stack limit a k a so let's see if it's explained or discussed here so it do states that aside from having a damage reduction of thirty percent effect. Um, it will cause Yumiya to be immune to all debuff effect. I mean, of course, other than effects that cannot be uh, negated or immune. And at the same time, when you gain Im uh, debuff immunity, you will gain Search of Fury, and each layer will increase 15% crit rate. So the max you can stack is up to 100%. Um, there is no cap limit really here but um, crit rate I mean once you read 100% you're definitely going to crit and this animation shows that with his talent which is his biggest pros and benefit is that it can make him immune to debuff while still staying strong and gaining all the stacks and layers he needs for his talent as you can see it, the numbers rise from two to four despite all the immunity to the debuff so even if you are immune to the debuff it still triggers his talent so this make this hero easier to use okay and then when he end his turn if his search of fairy is no less than four layers and you are landing in the danger zone you will lose your check of glory sog effect so you lost the damage reduction and the debuff immunity effect however what you gain is to act again And talking about the dealing damage, um, dealing magic damage if the defense is higher than magic defense. So they said when you may trigger act again, he will lost the check of glory. Then when he attack the hero unit, if the defense is greater than magic defense, it will become magic damage. And it is shown here that at the same time that a unit, the soldiers that you bring, their damage will be converted to magic damage too. However, you need to note that is that despite it has been converted to magic damage, um, if the, the enemy tanker is a physical tanker, characters like Vargas, the attack can still be got. So you got to treat it as you start off with physical attack first, then Vargas will be able to guard the physical attack. However, the damage is just being changed to or treated as magic damage instead. So it's being shown here. The highlighted part when you go into battle, if the defense is greater than magic defense, this battle damage deal will become um, magic damage cannot be dispelled and it is stated here that for those who don't who do not understand chinese so uh, mandarin it, it states that <coughs> Search of Fury has no stack limit and continuation turn. So as you can see the icon, the second icon in red is Search of Fury. The time limit is dash. So there's no CD or there's no um, buff turn. So it's pretty cool. You can just hang on to it. So there's some, first off, there's no limit. Um, it will only be triggered upon act again when you have at least four layers and you are in danger zone four layers and above
And after losing Shack of Glory, and after you end turn, after you act again and end turn, you will remove all your Search of Fury stacks count, and then you will regain damage reduction, debuff, uh, debuff immunity, and your Shack of Glory buff effect. So this is pretty cool um, compared to the Holy Attacker the, from the rebuff uh, uh, reincarnation faction, the Holy Attacker that came out together with Lowly Jessica. Um, oh gosh, I saw, finally forgot the name. Um, where where um, her situation is, upon receiving damage, your Holy shield from your talent it will be removed and you will, it will be changed to another effect and you can no longer regain it so um barrels for yumia is pretty cool that um you can just gain and lose gain and lose you can just um, regain it back after losing the other effect so it's kind of um long story short it's inter switchable so based on that further explanation as long as Yumir do not trigger his talent act again effect. He will keep retain and maintain his damage reduction and debuff immunity glory of shackle, uh, shackles of glory buff effect. Then second is that if he has four stacks or four layers or more stacks of such a fury buff. And he enters when he is in danger zone or after attacking, he will lose SOG and trigger his act again effect. Then at the same time, if targets physical defense is higher than his magical defense, the damage will become magic damage. Then at the end of the turn, you will regain your check of glory buff which in return provide you damage reduction and debuff immunity effect then moving on to his exclusive skill one um, gimmick so this common aura effect will let allies tree box around you to have themselves um, dispel one debuff effect and in return gave Yumia one layer of Search of Fury. Then when you use the active skills, you can recover 30% HP and give him four random buff and four random debuff. So yep, when you have Check of Glory buff effect, you'll be in, you will in be immune to the debuff effect and at the same time you gain the four stacks of Search of Fury. So there's a skills with only pros that give you all the good stuff. Okay, however, things to take note is that um, if you may already have such a fairy buff count, Then he will gain the buff. Then, where else the negative effect, which is like a debuff, and also the CD, the CD of the skills will be reduced based on the number of such a fury you had for each layer. Um, you remove one debuff. Also, you will remove both debuff. And buff uh, one each. Then, however, if when releasing these skills, if you do not have Shack of Glory and only Search of Fury, and if it already have four layers, uh, when using these skills, you will only uh, um, gain recover thirty percent HP. You will not gain debuff and buff effect
at the same time you straight away um, reset the CD of this queue so meaning you can just spam it on next turn then the following is a more or if not one of the most important information is that when releasing and gaining the buff uh, effect which include the plus two movement there's a total of seven so all of the seven buff you gain random four and well the data bank has already break it down for you this is the following so first is damage reduction 20 percent second is increased mobility by two third is every turn you will recover 20 percent of your hp fourth damage increase by 20 percent fifth increase damage by 20 percent six increase attack and intelligence by 20 percent seven aka the last increase magic defense by 30 percent so it's pretty cool he we, by using this active skills um there's a high chance that you don't need to and if that even if there is no faction buff buffer out there he can self buff himself then last but not least looking at his 3c is that um when he lost his Shackle of Glory, he will gain plus two mobility. And the great news is that this mobility increment effect can be stacked with other mobility increment effect. So it's definitely not a movement icon, it is an icon um, of itself. So you can combine it with its 1C to gain the buff stacks. Then, while you are in the danger zone, when you have four stacks, um, you can act again. So, under the condition, ignoring about your equipment and um, buff from allies, what Yumir alone himself can do are the following. So... Okay, what he can achieve is, um, and how far he can move is, he can move three, and first you gotta end step one, end your turn at danger zone and use your one C. Then you can get a plus three. You can move again. So a three plus two five. Then you have your three C increase mobility by and a plus two. So. After combining your 1C and plus 2 movement speed, the total steps Yumir can move is 10 blocks. Oh gosh. However, do know that the 1C skills um, effects are random. So uh, there's a high chance or there's a low chance that you may or may not be able to get the plus 2 mobility effect. So as you can see from this picture, one of this scenario is that um, of the four buff stacks you gain, um, none of them belongs to mobility stacks. Then for the tree C, if the target did not die from the attack, while well, you have check of glory you can act again so you can attack two times and make sure the the tankers die so this is a current method why he's one of the current meta is that um nowadays with the introduction of characters like strong characters like andrew and also with yumir you do not have to worry about tank because even like characters like yumir um with such high damage increment and attack he can give for himself and not to mention you can act again um, basically he is able to kill off the enemy's tank in one turn or at least should i say there's a higher chance of him doing that then okay last but not least we are talking about his casting patterns um characters to help unlock his bond and also by his 
recommended item build for this current meta. So this is his casting ingredient you need from level 1 to 10. Then this is his um, stats without items. Now, of course, we'll be finding out more during the demo play ourselves. Then this is a different class. And this is the first time that I, I seen that um, the demon class has lesser HP or lesser, um, certain lesser stats than other class. So the better or if not the best option is to go holy class. Not to mention you can receive the faction buff or the class buff from Elma 2.0 and additional information that his holy unit uh, can allow him to be equipped with dagger and heavy armor while his demon class can allow him to equip with dagger hammer and heavy armor Okay, sorry, almost missed out. So unlocking his bond. So this is the one that is defense bond. So for unlocking his defense bonds, you'll need Eris or Alice's in the global version. Then for his attack bond or strength bond, you'll need Leo back. And yep, now we're coming to the last one, showcasing his build. This is the current suggested meta build for S17, the start of S17 point climbing system in CN Apex. So more people are using the Bone Crusher, the first item. Of course, you can go to use Stinger, but Bone Crusher has been like a more suggested items. Then second is to use the Tiamat armor to resist against magic then third will be tier fury cause combination with this 1c you definitely gotta end and turn one then you'll trigger it then last but not least more people are using this accessory on the left um the fallen angel statue or angel statue the one on the left then soldier class sensi and the scene washer the first and the third are more used and in terms of ranking will be first will be Saint Washer, second will be Sensi, the last will be the zombie unit. The mainly reason is because um, he has no ignore plus disadvantages. So if enemies are using holy unit, um, bringing the demon class, you will be losing out. Then his enchantment, yet um, I've seen more players using clock than Breeze currently due to the fact that um, they want to spam his 3C skills and also the fact that his 1C skills has a chance to let him gain plus 2 mobility so he is not in a rush to go for Breeze however if you want to try on more of your luck Breeze is also the better choice and this is the points given for him in PvP and that is explain why he is the current new hero that has tier one in place of apex and we have come to the end if you like this video remember to like and subscribe and if you have anything leave it down in the comment section below this is coming see you guys on the demo play and goodbye